settle down. Okay. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody. Uh, this is supposed to be Comp 30300, which is a course on programming challenges. My name is Steve Skeena. I'm a visiting professor here. Uh, I was. Uh, I normally teach at the Sto Sto Stony Brook University in the United States. I, I come from near New York City. Okay, so if you're in New York City, it's a short ride, train ride from New York City. But uh, I'm here for a year, and um, this. Um, I, I guess I came in the in the spring, in the fall, and uh, I taught a grad course last semester. And this semester, I'm teaching a course uh, from that's really related to my book on pro called Programming Challenges. Um, let me start off over here. So, um, so what I'd like to do today is going to be basically an introduction to what we're going to do in here. And um, basically my goal for this semester is to have a course that is um, related to programming contest problems. How many people here are familiar with the ACM ICPC, the programming contest. How many people are familiar with the ACM programming contest? Raise your hand. Okay, I see a few of them. How many people are, are, are not familiar with the ACM programming contest? Raise your hand. Okay, good. I saw most of the hands that didn't go up the previous time, and that's good. Okay, like, it's important that we have interaction in this class, okay? So, uh, most people have not seen it. That's interesting. How many people here are familiar with the IOI? The Informatics Olympiad. Is there anybody who's familiar with that? Okay, I see one person familiar with it. Who here is not familiar with the IOI? Okay, that's good. Okay, again. How many people here are familiar with Top Coder? Is anybody here familiar with the Top Coder programming context? Nobody says Top Coder. How many people um, are not familiar with Top Coder? Raise your hands. Okay, good. Okay, so this is fine, okay, but this does not upset me that people are not involved familiar with it. That's very good, in fact, okay? But um, what this is, of course, is about is about there are these programming contests that are around. The ACM programming contest is probably the, the best established one and the most interesting one for what we're going to talk about. That basically um, are combines problem uh, programming and algorithms, and to a certain extent some team programming, but that is not really so important here. But they sort of combine the idea of programming and um, interesting algorithmic puzzle kinds of problems, okay, as part of this contest. And I think that, that these problems make a great um, way to learn about algorithms and, and to learn about programming. And so what I've done over the last, now probably about five or six years, build a course around, uh, sort of as a special topics course for undergraduates, around these ACM contest, program, pro, pro, contest type problems. And um, I wrote a book, uh, in, my co-author is a guy named Miguel Rivera in Spain, um, on these programming contest problems. And um, the co goal of the course is that, that um, to try to strengthen people's programming and problem solving <laughs> skills. That's the main goal, okay? Um, a secondary goal, depending upon how things work out, might be to prepare people here for the ACM programming team. Okay, every uh, school, certainly a a Hong Kong, you know, HKUST has a good programming team. Um, usually, they send a couple of teams each year to regional contests. And if any, if I'm saying anything that's wrong from anyone, has anyone ever actually appeared, uh, uh, participated in a regional programming contest for ACM? Okay, I see a couple of people. Okay, this is good. So presumably you guys go out to, I think, two different regionals here, if I'm correct. Is this right? So we'll talk about the whole structure of the programming contest, but the bottom line is that there is a programming team here, and that students who are good and get interested and involve it, well, may very well want to become members of a team and uh, strengthen the team here. Um, the question of whether you should be taking this course is something that hopefully you'll figure out during the course of the semester. I know that I'm the course of today, okay? Um, or maybe next week. Um, and it depends upon what your interests are. Um, are you interested in algorithmic type things? Are you interested in puzzle type things? Um, what background do you have in programming? Okay? Um, we'll talk a little bit about what the prerequisite is in a minute. And when you plan to graduate, 
and other weirdnesses about um, the, the course program here, which I don't understand very well. Remember, I'm a professor back at Stony Brook. Um, this is, I understand, the special topics course. Is that correct? What do you guys, for your graduation, um, how many people here are undergraduates? Raise your hand if you're an undergraduate. Okay. Raise your hand if you're not an undergraduate. Okay, the TA rose his hand. That was good. Okay, anybody else? Okay. So, where, just so I understand it and everybody else understands it, for your graduation requirements, what can you do with this course? Does anybody understand this? Okay, like, does this course help you towards graduation or not? Or is this a foreign question for people here? Does anybody understand what you do with this course in graduation? Or what your graduation requirements? Do you have to have grad do you have to have to do anything to graduate at this university? Presumably yes, right? You probably have to take certain courses of certain types or a certain number of courses. What are the graduation requirements here and how does it fit in? Does anybody have any idea? Or yeah? We have some kind of required courses and co courses. And this kind of this kind of course is CS elective. Okay, so it's a CS elective, and how many CS electives do you have to take to graduate? Mm, I only have five because I'm double major. Okay, so this falls in the category of a CS elective, is that right? Okay, and I guess for you to take it, you have to take a certain number of CS electives. How many, how many choices you have in the program here? Okay, or how, I, I don't know here how hard it is to find electives, how hard it's not to find electives. You may have a lot of choices. You may have very few choices. This is something just to make sure you understand. Okay, so this is filed under the electives. It's not one of the core courses. Okay, but uh, that's what we're using it for. Any questions about how it fits into your graduation requirements or your life? One other question from um, a question of prerequisites. The prerequisite for this course is supposed to be the what I would call the data structures class. Okay, um, this is the one where you learn to program with linked lists. You presumably learn how to program with something with with trees and stuff like this. Um, what course is that numbered here? Does anybody know? One seven one. Okay. How many people here have not taken one seven one? I know I signed a lot of people in. Said gave me fence. Get, he said begged to get into the course, and I registered every one of them. But how many people here have not taken 171? Is there anybody who has not taken it? Okay. What's your story, just out of curiosity? Uh, I'm from Minnesota. I'm just here for the semester. Okay. I'm taking it. Okay, you took a compar comparable thing back in Minnesota. Okay, good. Anybody else not take 171, the introductory data instructors class? 171 H. 17, what was that? 171H. 171H is this, that's the honors version, is that right? That to me is the same as 171, okay? I assume they teach you at least as much in the honors version. Okay, any questions? Okay, good. So, um, okay, if everybody has that background, I'm willing to let you in as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so let's get, um, let, let's deal with a little bit more about administration before we get into the mechanics of the course. Um, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pass out a sign-up sheet, okay? I know that I have everybody who's registered. I have you on a roster, okay? I have a certain amount of stuff. But what I'm interested in knowing is what is your name, your email, uh, your, 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 what year you are. I gather everybody here is year one, two, or three. Is that how they count it here? Right? Okay. Uh, in the United States, it's, a little, it's different. How many of you are actually year one? Okay, I see three year ones. Okay, how many people here are year two? Okay, I see a bunch of year twos. And I see that everybody sits together in clusters, it looks like. How many year threes are there? Okay, that seems that's, fu that's fine. Okay, and I'd like to know if you have any uh, programming contest experience on the, uh, that's the other note that I want to make here. So I'm going to pass this around. Please fill it in. And we'll talk about it. Okay, so let's go through that thing. So what I'd like to do now is to go to the um, syllabus a little bit. First of all, are there any questions so far about what the course is or what we will cover? Okay. Okay, I want to now go through the syllabus fairly carefully. Um, 
Again, I'm Steve Skeena, um, and uh, it's best that, you know, uh, I, I, I list what my office number is here. I'm in my office a fair amount, but, um, you know, you're best off if you want to talk to me, come and hit me at class, okay, or send me mail, and we'll be happy to get together. Um, we have a TA, at least at this moment. Our TA is Zhang Bo. Zhang Bo, stand up. Everybody give him a cheer. Uh, round, round of applause. Okay, good. That may be the last thing he'll ever do in here, okay? Because uh, it, historically, as I teach this course, I don't have a TA. So we'll see what happens, to what extent we integrate the TA into the course. Um, but if you need to contact him, his email is there. Um, okay. Um, the textbook for the course here is his book, Programming Challenges, that I am the uh, co-author of. And at an American university, it would be a very routine thing to assign this as a textbook that people buy. And students would buy it, and I would know every student would have it. But I gather that may or may not be the convention here. How many of you actually own a copy of this textbook? Raise your hand if you own a copy of the textbook. OK? Nobody. How many of you, um, if I stamped on my foot and demanded you buy a textbook, copy of the textbook, how many of you would happily buy a copy of the textbook? OK, I see a bunch of people, including the American students, because this is what they do in America. OK, and it's a good thing, actually. Um, especially if you write textbooks, actually. But, um, but, but um, OK, so let me tell you about the textbook. I would like to see the, the way the course is going to work is we're going to have, um, you know, spend a lot of time pouring over the details of individual programming contest problems, okay? The full text of each programming contest problem is in the book, okay? In America, when I teach this course, everybody has the break book, they bring the book to class. We say, gee, what about that problem on the 3n plus 1 problem? Why are people having problems? They look at the book, they try to read it, we say, well, what does this say? And learning how to read the problems is an important thing. Referring back to the problems in the course of discussion is an important thing. So, I would like it if people had the book, okay? And in the United, you know, I would demand it in the United States. And, you know, it, it, as I noticed, a lot of people wouldn't even have it even if I did demand it. <coughs> if you're not going to have the book, I would strongly rec in, insist that you come with printouts of the four problems that we are supposed to discuss that week. Okay? Is that a deal that I'm willing to make you? Okay? So all the problems, in this book there are problems and there is tutorial material about how do you go about solving them, the algorithmic techniques and stuff like that. I think the algorithmic technique stuff is good, that's why I wrote the book. But at the very least, come to class every day with the four problems that we're supposed to talk about that week. Does that sound like a deal? Is there anybody who finds that unfair? Okay. I'm willing to take protests now. Okay. But do, do come to, and there's several places where that material is available. I have put, tried to put a copy of this on reserve in the library. So if you want to look at the book and you don't have it, you can go run to the library. But you're not allowed to take that out of the library. So, um, so, you know, but, but the problems themselves are online. Any questions? Okay. Other books, again, the kind of books that we talk about are, um, that are useful for this course are ones that are in typically involving algorithmic things. I would say my Programming Challenges book is the most useful. You know, there are other books on algorithms that I like. This is my other favorite book about algorithms. This is a book called The Algorithm Design Manual. And this is another one that I wrote, okay? So, um, so I recommend this book a lot. Um, in fact, what's interesting is that the first version of my book, this is the second edition of the Algorithm Design Manual. This came out in August. And the first version, I didn't have any programs in it at all, okay? And I sort of thought of it as being, you know, it was all basically pseudocode and, and um, stuff like that. I then wrote the um, Programming Challenges book, which was designed for programming contest program. I used some, some examples of code, and I found that was actually a good idea. And so in the new version of the book here, actually I've morphed some of my code into here and written some new stuff. So I think that learning actually um, algorithms from programs, and as opposed to sort of just sort of code, pseudocode descriptions, 
is a useful thing. Okay, but that we'll discover. Any questions right now about books and what the status is? So please come in with copies of the program of, of, of the four problems each week. Okay? They've already been assigned each week for the semester if you go to the course website. Okay? And uh, I want to see that. Any questions? Okay, let's keep going on through this. So there are, um, uh, the, as far as the grading for the course goes, there's going to be three components to the grading. Every week, I'm assigning four programming problems per week. Okay? And this is a week, so already you've been assigned four programming problems. Um, there, your goal each week is to solve the most programming problems correctly that you can. Okay? So your grade for the week will be some number between zero and four. Okay? Based on how many of them you solved correctly. And correctly means that they got past a robot judge that grades them. We'll talk more about the robot judges in a minute. Okay? Um, historically, when I teach this at Stony Brook, the people, the students who complete at least one problem per week, okay, participate, do the other assignment, which I'll talk about, and participate actively in class, come out with some form of a B. The students who get at least two week problems a week, done, come out with some form of an A. Okay, so although I assign four problems a week, I do not it's demand that everybody get all four of them done. Okay? Because done doesn't mean that you've done the effort and you turn it in. Done means that the robot judge says yes. And sometimes the robot judge is programmed to always say no. Okay, or sometimes it's very hard to get the robot judge to say yes. Okay? So that's going to be the, the, the goal. That, that's sort of my vision here. Um, the, the other assignment that I'm going to try this semester that I've never done, but I think will actually be kind of interesting, is um, I'm going to be giving everybody a block of 100 problems. You'll see when we get to the robot judge, you'll see that the, the problems are organized in blocks of 100. And I'm going to assign each student in here a block of 100 problems with the goal that they have to actually read them and then give me their opinion about these pro each problem in a one-line format, okay? So the answer to that part of the assignment will be 100 lines of typing, one from each problem, okay? It, showing me basically what you think of the problem, what category you think it falls in, how easy or hard is it, how interesting is it, something like that. And I think it's a good thing to think about. The other part of the class that is important to me is that there is a grade for class participation. Class participation means that you are um, physically here. That's part of what a class participation is. Okay? Second part of it is that, that, that there's going to be a lot of interaction. As I go through, I'll go through this, I have slides to this effect later on, but it's very, very important to me. Actually, if it's possible, could you take the seat over there? There's a reason for that, actually. I'll tell you the reason in a minute. Um, thank you. Okay? So there's going to be, um, class participation is an important thing. The flow of the class each week is going to be one class period, the first class period of the week. I will assign the problems. I will introduce the problems. I will present any relevant algorithmic techniques we need for them. The second part of the week, you're supposed to come in here and report your struggles with them. Okay? Saying, oh, how many did you get right? Oh, no one got any right. Okay? What was the problem here? Okay? And we go through and we try to figure out what some of the issues with these problems are. And then you have the, the rest of the week to finish it before you get greeted next week with a new set of problems. Okay? Any questions? Okay? So class participation is very important to me in here. And that's why I give it a healthy chunk of the grade. Any question about the grading? Questions? So can we submit our, our work? Okay, yeah, so we'll talk about the robot judge in a, a, a little bit. But basically the question was, can you submit it multiple times? The answer is yes. So when we, when we get to, I'll talk more about the robot judge, but the robot judge is basically a website. And you will submit your problem to it. And either the robot will say yes or the robot will say no. If the robot says yes, you walk away and you go to another problem. If the robot says no, 
you figure out what's wrong with your program and you resubmit it. At which point the robot will say yes or it will say no. And if it says no, you will go and you will work on it more. Okay? Any questions? So one reason why I'm so cavalier about having a TA in this course is that, um, that, that the robot is doing the grading. Okay? I am not really doing the grading. Okay? If I was doing the grading, I would have the TA do the grading. Okay? But instead I've got the robot to grade for me. Okay? Any questions about that? Actually, one question while we're talking about it here. I come from New York. I speak English. I talk very fast. How, are people having trouble following the way I'm speaking? How many people think I'm speaking too fast? Raise your hand if I'm speaking too fast. Okay. How many people are having trouble understanding what I'm saying? Maybe it's not that I'm speaking too fast, but maybe it's that I'm speaking English or something like this. Is there anybody who has any trouble understanding what I'm saying so far? How many people do not have trouble understanding what I'm saying? Okay, very good. Okay. Any other questions about the uh, homeworks? So every week there will be 14 weeks in the semester, 14 sets of four problems. Okay. And our goal is to maximize how many we solve. Any questions? Okay, continuing on with the, um, this thing I talked about, the problem review. Uh, that will, we'll probably pass that out in about a month or so, once people get some experience with the problems and stuff. There will be no midterm exam and no final exam in here, okay? Unless I am required to by the university. These things, I'm, uh, if there is, the exam will be a question like, how many problems did you type in, okay? And then when you <laughs> fill that out, you can go. My intention is not to grade you on final exam type material. This is a question on how many course problems you succeed in getting through the judge. That is the main goal here. Any questions? Okay. Um, again, and we, I look at the rules for the game. I have a course web page. Um, the course web page is listed, the URL is listed here. It's from my home web page here. Okay, slash 300. Um, uh, a, a copy of the notes will be here. A copy of, um, you know, basically whatever's there is there. But my intention is that's the web page for the course. One thing that's going to be there are copies of my lecture slides. And another thing that's going to be there, hopefully, are copies of video of the classes. Okay? This is actually going to be interesting. If everything is right, that camera over there, okay, if you look up there, see that camera? That camera over there is recording every lecture here. Okay? And that within like a couple of days after class, there will be links distributed to me, and I will forward the, you know, I'll post on the website to where the video files for the class are, okay? So this to me is a good thing. In principle, people can, maybe later from around the world, can watch this class from the miracle of television, okay, over there, their little computer screen. Um, so the good thing is that those things will be available. Um, if anybody, during the course of this class, I'm hoping there's gonna be a lot of interaction and people will run to the blackboard occasionally to show me the right way to do things. Is there anybody here who has any kind of religious or other objection to being filmed? Okay? If you do, let me know. Hope, presumably not. Okay? So I, don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it. Okay? And uh, if there is a problem, let me know. Okay? I don't want that to chill interaction in here. Any questions? Okay? Um, any questions about that? The other thing that I'd say is that... Um, in past years, I think I say it from here, in past years, I have had my classes audio recorded, not video recorded. And if you wanted to listen to the audio from previous years, okay, this is bad news, so. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna say no more. Okay, um, the, uh, okay, so, um, well, yeah, so, so there's audio from previous classes available on the web if you follow the links back to my Stony Brook page. But I can't think of a reason why you'd want to deal with that right now. Hopefully you'll find this one better. Okay? Any questions? Okay. Um, the book, like I said, is Programming Challenges. The judging website that I'm hoping we will use is a judging website from um, my book called ProgrammingChallenges.com. 
if you have problems with the website or anything like that, I'd like to know about them. Okay? So please give me feedback. Um, the book and the website, the book has been out for a while. Okay, and the website has been out for a while. So, you know, I know roughly what people think about it, I think. But I'm happy to hear any comments or any questions or complaints. Yes? Well, President, uh, I used to visit the programmingchallenge.com, and that seems not uh, quite stable. Okay, and so. Here, we, uh, there, there are peri periods of time that we cannot access that. Uh, but if we access UBA, that online drive, that's easier. Okay, so this is a very good point, which actually gets to what I have here on the slide. Okay, there are in fact two robot judges we will care about in this, in this semester. One of them is the programmingchallenges.com, which is what I would like to think is the, the, the best judge for this, con this course. The other is the UV University of the Valladolid, okay, robot judge. Okay, this is a, a, a robot judge that is supposed to be in Spain but may actually be in Texas. Again, it doesn't matter. This is a virtual thing. It doesn't matter where the computer physically is. Okay? Every problem in the course can be judged either on programming challenges or on the UVA judge. And so your homework between now and Wednesday is to register and get accounts on both of these judges. Okay? In an ideal world, all the programming problems you will submit through programming challenges, and you will find the judge will treat with them world properly. We do not, however, live in an ideal world, okay? And the UVA judge has the property that it is probably bigger and more stable than the programming challenges one, okay? So my attitude towards this is you should try to submit them on the programming challenges judge. When you decide it isn't working for you or it's frustrating for you, okay? Maybe you do it over the UVA judge, okay? And if you want later at the end, resubmit it the programming challenge or not. Question? Uh, sometimes a, 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 a program can get a solved in programmingchallenge.com but cannot get ACE. Okay, so, so another problem is that the judges are slightly different. Again, when you have judges, you go to a, law, a, a, a judge who commit a crime. You go to a judge, okay? Hopefully any judge in the world will find you guilty. That's why we have a judge system, right? But sometimes judges will not find you guilty when you are guilty, right? Okay? Here we have a little bit of a different problem. Um, the, the programming challenges judge uses slightly different standards, somewhat different standards perhaps, on certain problems than the UVA judge, okay? If so, you might find yourself getting a program accepted by one and not by the other. As far as I am concerned, once you get something accepted by one of the judges, that is good enough, okay? At the end of the semester, I'm gonna to talk to each one of you to figure out how many you got solved. You solved, I'm gonna look at your programming challenges record, I will look at your UVA judges record, right? And the aggregate of those two is what I will accept, okay? So I don't mean for you to be frustrated by the weirdnesses of the judges, okay? It's important to recognize that there are weirdnesses of judges, okay? These guys have seen the weirdnesses of the judges, okay? Any questions? That said, I am hoping that there are less weirdnesses now than there were in the past, okay? Back in the fall, uh, Miguel Revilla, who's the guy who runs my ju the judges and the co-author of the book and a, a guy who has made all these problems available to the world, um, has done something to unify the judges, okay? How complete that is and how well successful that is is less clear to me. Hopefully over the course of the semester we will figure that out, okay? But recognize this is what I would like to see. I'd like to see you try programming challenges first. If you are frustrated by that, go over to the other one. If you're frustrated by both of them, drop the course and go to a different course, okay? But you can use whatever, you know, but use whatever judge works for you. Any questions about that? Okay, good. Let's keep going with the rules. As I said, we want this to have a weekly flow and that the goal is going to be, this is a course where I want to see people do a little bit each week as opposed to wait until the end of the semester and do everything, okay? 
First of all, I don't think it will be possible to do everything the last week of the semester. Second, I, um, you know, for, for to learn or to get the benefit of the interaction of this, the kind of collaborative solving of this, it has to be done in a flow. So my goal is that you try to do what you can each week, okay, <laughs> rather than try to, to wait till the end, okay? The people who wait till the end never get around to it and never get solved very much. Any questions? Okay, I'm not going to explicitly say you can't do it the week after the problems are signed. Okay, but I will say that it is bad practice to not be keeping up with the course each week. Any questions? Okay, um, let's take a look at this thing. Again, for next week what I want you to do is I describe in points 8 and 9. Um, the, uh, the, the course is the, uh, you know, make sure you go to the UVA judge and register and the programming challenges judge. Okay? Any questions? Okay, let's keep going. What are the other rules? Um, these judges will let you use whatever programming language you want. Out of curiosity, I want to see what everybody's favorite programming language is. Whose favorite programming language is Java? Raise your hand if Java is your favorite programming language. Okay, I heard two or three people. Okay, who here thinks C is their favorite programming language? I heard one person say C is their favorite programming language. Who here thinks C++ is their favorite programming language? Okay, a lot of people here. Again, they teach the courses here in C++. Back where I am, they teach in Java, and so the answers would be different. How many people teach uh, find Pascal as their favorite programming language? One person. Okay. That's a, that may or may not have been a joke. I don't know. Is that a joke or serious? What? Was that serious or? Okay, good. Okay. Anyway, that said, I learned how to program in Pascal, but uh, very few people use it these days. All of these judges are problems are accepted by the judge. So you should pick out your favorite language and do it. Those of you who are no multiple languages, Certain problems are easier to do in Java than C++, okay, and vice versa, based on perhaps what libraries are available, what, it's also based on what you know, okay, that's really, I guess, what it comes down to it. If you don't know Java, I can guarantee you Java is not the best language for you to be writing it in, okay. On the other hand, there may be a reason to keep an open mind about these things, okay. Any questions? Um, what are we allowed to say? What are the rules on it here? I want the students to work on their programs individually. Okay? So you're happy. I, I allow you to talk about the problems. Okay? I allow you to um, look at uh, books that you want. I don't want people to go look on the web to see if there is a copy of the program already out there. Okay? That defeats the spirit of this thing. Okay? And again, you're, you're running, submitting these things to the UVA judge. We know what programs, you know, we, we, we do certain cheat tests on the judge. Is your program the same as some other program that was previously submitted? Okay? So we have a way to find out some of these things. Okay? And I, it seemed like a pretty pointless thing in this course to try to do that. The purpose of this is to try to figure out how to get, write your own programs and get through this kind of thing. Okay? So I encourage you to not really search the web for help, but instead search books. This mirrors, by the way, the rules of the contest. When you take the ACM contest, you're allowed to come in, at least in the, in the regional contest we have, you're allowed to bring in as many books as you want. Some teams come in carrying suitcases, okay? And, but you're not allowed any internet access, okay? And so I want us to replicate this kind of experience perhaps on a different cycle. Okay, any questions? Actually, my book was banned for a couple of years from the regional contest, which was a silly thing. Actually, they eventually unbanned it, okay? So you're allowed to bring this in as, you, as well. Any questions? Okay, um, what else is there here? Again, I don't, want, I don't want you to cheat and I will, follow, I, don't, I will push through this. If I find people are copying programs or downloading it from it, that's the obvious way to cheat in here. And if I get that, I'm going to have to do something about it. Okay? I will have to go to the, you know, find out what the local policy is and make sure that I punish people according to the local policy. I don't want to have to do that. Okay? So don't make me do that. 
One final note here is, at least back in the United States, on all my syllabi, I have to say that some students have learning disabilities, okay, or medical problems or physical problems that might prevent them from participating in the course in some way. And if you've got any of these problems, come back and talk to me. I once had a student in my, uh, in, in my class who I went through almost a whole semester before he let me know he was deaf and he couldn't actually hear anything I had said, okay, all semester, okay? And that would be, that, you know, that's an unfortunate thing, okay? If you have some kind of these problems, let me know about them. Any questions? Okay, let's go to the last page of the syllabus while we're on a roll here and go through what I view as being the schedule. So I have um, put together uh, a, a schedule each week. Course, there are 14 weeks in the semester. There are 14 chapters in this book. We are going to go do one chapter per semester, per week. Okay? Um, the first couple of weeks are going to be testing things that are relatively elementary. Things like, for this week the goal is prove that you can use the judge and, do, and, and solve problems that don't require any really advanced knowledge or anything more advanced than arrays. Then the next week we'll talk about problems where data structure issues start to matter. Okay? The week after we'll talk about string problems. Okay, where you deal with problems on text strings. None of these have yet gotten very algorithmically demanding. But then it's going to heat up a little bit. We'll talk about a, pro uh, a, a week of problems where sorting is sort of the idea that people use. Not necessarily explicitly write a sort, but where the idea of sorting is sort of an important thing algorithmically. We're going to deal with problems on arithmetic. Okay? Week after that, we'll deal with problems on combinatorics, how you count. Okay? And gets into some interesting counting material, mathematical material. Week after, we will deal with problems on number theory. Okay? Week after that, we will deal with problems on backtracking, exponential search. So each week the idea is there's going to be a different class of problems, okay? And, um, you know, it's important to get an idea of these things. The week after that we'll deal with problems that are on graph traversal, breadth first search, depth first search. Week after that we will deal with more algorithmically interesting problems on graphs, shortest paths, minimum spanning freeze, and the like. Week after that we will deal with dynamic programming, okay, which is one of my favorite algorithmic things. Week after that, we will start dealing with problems that are on grids, so that's a little bit of a break. Before we get into some serious geometry, and then finally computational geometry, things like that. So each week we will be surveying a different class of problems, okay? We will be moving through, a, in some sense, a lot of material. But the material you really need to know is simply what it takes to get your one or two problems through the judge every week, okay? And that is a tractable matter. Any questions here? Questions, complaints, anything today? Okay, fair enough. So let's go through, where's the uh, sign-up sheet? Where did that go? How far did that get? Did that get to the other side of the room yet? Or? <coughs> okay, let it go there. Okay, so, so this may recap some of the effort that we talked about here. But this course, if it's going to be interesting, is going to require class participation. This is something that, that I want to stress here. Because I know from my experience last semester, students are more reluctant to participate, okay, in class than I am used to back in the United States. Throughout class, I would typically say, are there any questions? Silence. Are there any questions? Silence. Class is over, everyone comes up to me. Oh, I have a question. Okay? It's important that we, we, there be interactions in here. Because at various points in the semester, I am going to say, we'll read a problem together. I'll say, what do we do next? And I will sit back and wait for an answer. And the class will get very, very boring if there is no answer. Because I will sit here and wait. Has anybody ever heard of the, uh, has anyone ever here heard of John Cage? I don't know if anyone's ever heard of John Cage. He was a favorite, famous avant-garde musician. If you looked at the 50s and 60s, John Cage was an important cultural figure okay, in the world. 
And one of his most famous, as a composer, his masterpiece was something called 433. Has anyone ever heard of this piece of music? Okay? What it was, was it was a piece for an orchestra. You would go into the orchestra, the conductor would stand up there and wait his hand, and then the conductor and the orchestra would be completely silent for four minutes and 33 seconds. And the audience would sit there for four minutes and 33 seconds not hearing anything. Okay? And that's what this course will be like, okay, if there is not participation in here. Any questions? Okay? If you want, I'm sure there's recordings of that on the web if you want to hear it. But, uh, but you probably get the idea. Any questions? Okay, good. Okay, so let's go through about the ACM contest. It seems like there are very few people here who are familiar with the ACM programming contest. And this is okay with me, okay? I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not concerned about this. But you should understand what the, um, the, uh, what, what, what the issue is like. Because the, judge, the judge was in some sense built as a program, as a training system for the programming contest, the ACM programming contest. So in the ACM programming contest, it's a team contest, okay? That's one thing that's different than what we have here. In the ACM programming contest, the ICPC, each team consists of three students, okay? Each team normally has access to one computer for the three students, okay? In my region, we have two computers per team, which I think is actually a lot better, but um, because it keeps people busier. But on the other hand, my, our teams always die in the world finals because the ones that, that won are ones that are good at using um, two computers, whereas in the rest of the world, they're good at the teams that are good at using one computer. One computer involves things, teams sharing, and teams working as teams, okay? And uh, that's a little bit of an art. That's not what I'm really interested in pressing about. But what they consist of are short programming problems, okay? A typical contest here will consist of, let's say, on the order of eight or nine problems, okay? Um, each team will have a total of five hours to solve eight or nine problems, okay? And um, the problems go, typically there's one or two in a region that are very, very easy, hopefully, so the team doesn't, no teams come away with zero, because they're unhappy. But, you know, the, 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 the best problems turn out to be pretty substantial, okay? And it's kind of amazing to me, the really top championship teams, the idea that you can have a team with one computer that can solve eight or nine programming problems, some of which are fairly sophisticated, in a total of five hours is quite an accomplishment, okay? But what's good about these problems, in my mind, are that they do tend to use well-known algorithmic problems, puzzle problems, interesting things. They usually capture an interesting thing, okay? Um, mathematically or algorithmically. Usually by putting a story above it, so you can't see let's say what the pure really idea is or the classic name of the idea is, okay, above it. Sometimes the problems are written in funny ways. I usually find them interesting to read, okay. Um, so the good news is that there are problems, um, you know, when you look at, go to one of these contests, you know, you'll, you'll see that there's a five-hour contest, at least in our region. They'll pass out the problems, they'll say go, and you'll see in about so after seven or eight minutes, the first team will solve the first problem, okay? And then there'll be a few more teams that solve the problem within a couple, you know, minute, couple minutes of them. And then some of the slower teams will start to get into the action. And then the best team will start, well, after 20 minutes, have solved its second problem, okay? And then um, it, it sort of keeps going on, okay? Until about an hour before the end of the contest, they blank out the scoreboard. So nobody knows what each team is doing for the last hour of the contest. And then suddenly at the end of the word, they announce who the winner is, okay? So this year I was very proud to say Stony Brook qualified for the world finals. And the way we won is it was an overconfident team that had uh, solved a lot of the problems very, very quickly. They solved eight of the nine problems, I think, very, very quickly, within like two hours. My team kept plugging along and solved the ninth problem okay, uh, with, with 11 minutes to go in the contest, okay, and they, they pushed ahead and they won. Okay, so what's interesting here? 
The one issue about these judging things is that we have an automatic judge for the pro problems. One thing that's important to recognize is that your problems are judged by a robot. And they are telling you whether it is correct or not correct. They are not giving you the test case why it failed. They are not telling you why your program is wrong. They are just saying, I do not satisfy your program. Do not believe your program is correct. Okay? So the interesting thing, it's either the interesting or frustrating thing about this world is that you get very little feedback, okay, as to why your program isn't working. Okay, I will talk about it in a minute. We'll go through this a slide with all the verdicts from the judges. Okay? But um but you're gonna have to figure out why your judge is wrong by looking at the output carefully, reading the problem carefully, okay, and figuring it out that way. Okay? Any questions about it? This is one thing that makes debugging these kind of programs tough. Okay, is you don't have that kind of information. Okay? Any questions? Okay. As far as how do they score the teams, again, maybe I should have talked about this first. Basically, the team score is based on the number of problems you solve within the length of the contest, which is typically five hours. Um, the way they break ties in the ACM contest is based on the t cumulative time for correct submissions. So basically, every time, when, when the judge finally approves your program, they give you a credit for having solved it, and they also give you a timing score of how much time since the beginning of the contest did you spend to get to this point. So I'd just like you to trust out the blackboard. So if we have, this is the blackboard, right? Okay, <laughs> good. So suppose, let's say this is the five hours. Let's say you solve a problem here, 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 and here. Your timing score is going to be the sum of that. Does everybody see that? So it is good to get problems solved quickly, but it is better to get problems solved. Okay, the first point of view is the number of problems solved. Again, our Stony Brook team this year slid in under the, under the you know, managed to win the region by so solving one more problem than the other team, even though the other team had solved all of its other problems much faster than us, okay? So first thing is a uh, number of problems, then there is elapsed time. But they also give you penalties for getting wrong submissions. So suppose, let's say, that you had submitted incorrect things. At this point, let's say, well, actually, let's say for each one of these problems, let's say you submitted an incorrect one here, two incorrect ones here, an incorrect one here, and on some of the other problems which you didn't ultimately get right, you submitted these incorrect ones. For every incorrect submission on a problem that you ultimately do solve, you get a penalty of like 20 minutes, okay? So if you solve a problem, the time it's going to be, if you're, the, the, the score for it is going to be the time to solve it plus 20 times the number of incorrect submissions on that. If you don't eventually solve the problem, the incorrect submissions don't cost you, okay? So you're free to fire up incorrect submissions for any problem you're not going to actually solve. My team at, 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 that, that won this year, as a joke, submitted uh, a Hello World program for the last problem that, that, they, that, that, no, that they didn't get a chance to try to solve, to sort of scare the other teams a little bit, okay? But, uh, but that didn't cost them. If they had submitted Hello World on one that they did solve, then it would cost them time wise Any questions? For our purposes in class, we don't care about the number of incorrect submissions, okay? We don't care about how much elapsed time you take for it, okay? All we're gonna be grading on is the number of problems. Any questions? Okay. Okay, what is the judge going to tell you? Again, the judge is often very picky. The judge is basically it's a robot. What does, it, it's basically comparing the output of your program to what the, what the specifications say the output should be. Is that right? Now, they're going to try, usually, to do a little bit of sanity checking, allow a little bit of sloppiness. Okay? 
but often not very much. Okay, it might be more than just a simple diff. Okay, but you can't guarantee that. So what are the possible? Once it you submit a program, what is it that possibly might happen? You might get back a verdict that says it's accepted. <coughs> if it's accepted, then you're done. That's what we want to get back as a verdict. Sometimes you might get a sense of an accepted with a presentation error. That means that your format is slightly off what it should be. But the judge recognizes that enough that it's willing to let you get credit for it. I am willing to let you get credit as soon as you get an accepted with presentation error. Okay? So you don't have to try to get an accepted if you get accepted with presentation error. Sometimes they will give you a presentation error without accepted. Some of the problems may require the hard part may be how you format the thing. Okay? Does that make sense? And if so, then if they notice that you've got a problem with the formatting, then that's part of the job here. Okay? Any questions? Sometimes they can be very picky. Once one of my programming teams lost credit for at one of the regional contests because their answers were too accurate. Okay? They specified how many digits of precision they wanted from the judge. If you gave an answer that was more accurate than that, then that wasn't right, okay? And so you have to be very, very careful and read what the specifications of the problems are, okay? Sometimes the judges will do things with the intention of trying to trip up students who don't read it carefully. I don't know if any one of you have ever had an assignment in a class where you sit down at the beginning, the teacher gives you a, a survey to fill out, okay? And um, the first question was, first read the whole form carefully before doing anything. And the second is, write your name. Third, you know, tell me your age of birth. Four, write a story about what your, uh, you know, story, you know, what, what your life history is. Last, don't do anything. You had to have read the form to the end without doing anything. <coughs> if you got this far, just put an X in this box, okay? The goal here is that you have to read these things carefully. Any questions? Okay. What other answers might you get from the judge? Okay, you might get what they call a wrong answer report. A wrong answer means that you're, you're, you got an answer that was wrong relative to their, what they think it is. Okay? Hopefully, or I expect if you're doing business in here, you'll probably get a bunch of these. This means that you've got to rethink your algorithm, rethink what you're doing. Hopefully you won't get too many of these. These are compile errors, okay? And um, that means that, that you submitted the source code to the judge. The judge couldn't compile what you were doing, okay? Maybe at the beginning there will be problems with this, okay? But hopefully once you've gotten a couple of programs through the judge, there will no longer be problems with the compiler. Any questions about that? Now, the Java compilers for the judge have been flakier than the other ones. I hear there's very few Java programmers here, okay? So, um, this is probably more of a risk for the Java people, okay? But uh, make, sure you, make sure your program compiles locally before you submit it, okay? That's basically the advice I give you here. Any questions? You may get a runtime error. Okay, this means that the program failed due to a segmentation fault, a divide by zero, something like this. Okay, and so if you get one of these, you have to check for pointer references, division by zero, problems like that. Sometimes you might get a submission error. This is if somehow you didn't give the proper information to the judge when you were actually submitting it. There's a couple of different ways you can submit these programs. There's an email interface. There is a web interface, okay? Make sure that you <laughs> fill those things out properly. Any questions? There's other kinds of errors you might get. You might get that the time limit is exceeded. On many of these problems, there are algorithmic components to them, where the hard part is doing it within the time limit that they say. These problems will have um, input, these problems will typically tell you how big the inputs are and how much time you have to get the thing to run, okay? If your problem takes long, program takes longer, too long, 
it will cut you off and they'll say time limit is exceeded. Here you probably have an efficiency problem if you've got one of those. Any questions? You might get a memory limit exceeded. There's also a memory limit on these, although these usually are not problems here. But if you try to start out by saying, oh, I'll set up a, a, an array of size 1 billion, this hopefully will be a problem. Any questions? There you might get an output limit. There's also a limit as to how many lines of output you can print. If you had submitted a program, 4i goes from 1 to a zillion, prints hello world, hopefully you will get an output limit error. Any questions? The final error is that there's certain functions in certain programs that are forbidden to you. Because, like, for example, there might, you're not allowed to fork off other processes. Okay? You're not allowed to try to, you know, hack into the system. If you use Java or certain libraries, you may not be allowed to use certain libraries. There's some libraries in Java, for example, that are considered by the judge too powerful. And if you use them, they will permit it. Okay? So be aware that these things will happen. Any questions? Except for these verdicts, you're not going to get any information about what the judge says. Any questions? Okay. As I said, you can use whatever language you want. Everybody here seems to be a C++ person. That's fine. If you want to use something else, I encourage you to do that. Okay? Any questions? The only problem that my students, like the ones that, that, that just made the world, you know, the world final, they would have been Java people mostly. Okay? And Java is fine. There's a certain issue with using standard I.O. in Java. That uh, if you again, you guys want will want to get some experience with that. You may want there's a template available that might make that easier for you. Any questions? One thing that I found interesting is when we wrote the book, we, the judge that the robot judge that we use, this UVA judge, had had about a million submissions to it. Now it's about six million. Okay, and so you could look and see what happened. What was the distribution of errors? by programming language. And this gives you an idea of what kinds of problems people had okay, by language. In general, they were pretty good. It said that something like um, the accepted, about 30% of all submissions were accepted. So you should expect to go through a certain amount of cycle time of submitting it, getting frustrated, getting a wrong answer, and resubmitting it before you get it right. It's not going to be the case that you get this right all the time on the first submission. Um, one thing that was interesting was there was quite a difference. Th at that time, the Java acceptances were a lot lower than anybody else. And the reason was not that Java was bad, but because the compiler was bad. Okay, 30% of the things didn't compile that were submitted. That, I think, has now been fixed up. We now use a later version of Java. So don't be afraid to use Java if you're at least try to use Java. Who's we have who's Java who's had Java as their favorite language? So one person here did. Okay? I'm curious especially to hear what your reactions are. Try to do it in Java. Try to do the first couple in Java. And if you have problems with that, let me know. Is that fair? Yeah. Well, okay, so the recommended, you have to debug your program here. Wait, you're talking about what, what compiler should we use. Is that what you're saying? Yes. My guess is you would ideally want to use the compiler that they use. Okay? I believe they would be using an open source one. Okay? On a Linux platform. So that's probably what they would be doing. Okay? And it's probably the most popular one of those. <laughs> on the other hand... Try it now. Read, read what the judge says about what version of Java it accepts and things like that. It now accepts a more modern version of Java than it had in the past. Okay, and so I think the Java will be just fine now. I don't want to scare you too much with this. Okay, if you're a Java person, that's a good thing to do. And I'm curious especially to hear what your, rea your reactions are after you try it. Any questions? What about C++ compiler version? What compiler versions of C++? Uh, does anybody know? Or? It uses the GNU C++, that I believe. What compiler version, I don't know. It probably is posted someplace. 
But frankly, if you need to, if, if you're, what you're doing is so subtle that it depends upon the compiler version, you're probably doing something wrong. That would be my, my belief there. Okay? Any question? More relevant are what libraries are there. Okay? I'm not sure, for example, whether or not the uh, STL is available there or not. That's the kind of thing that's probably more relevant for you guys. Okay? Any questions? And anyway, so it sort of shows you that, uh, that there are problems. Not everything gets accepted. Any questions about this? Okay. What I'd like to do, actually, uh, maybe what I'd like to do, let me try before I get into the specifics of the problems. Let me just show you what I think the judging sites are. So if you go to um, programmingchallenges.com, this I believe is what you get, okay? And somewhere in here it says we have, you know, there should be a way of getting your, um, what you call it, a new account, okay? Actually, last time I tried, there was something here for a new account. Has anybody tried to get an account on this? Okay. Anybody know where to go to get it? Let's go back and try this thing here again. Okay. When I was there, let's try this thing here. Okay. When I tried this just a couple of days ago, there was a, a, uh, a place to log in here. Um... And I think that that's true. What does it say? Any ideas where to go here? Okay, we've migrated to a new server. Maybe this is interesting. Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay, that's maybe not so important. The other thing that I'd suggest is, actually, I'm a little surprised because that I did get to see working earlier. The other thing that I'd say is go to Google and type in, let's try, uh, programming challenges. Let's see what happens. Okay. And this says programming challenges. No, that doesn't look right. Except what's this say something about? Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Actually, how do anyone know how to make this English? Okay. I'm used to it working in English. Um, okay. This may or may not work. Okay. Um... The only thing that I tried when I Googled today was let's Google a UVA judge. UVA robot judge. Okay. And now I've got a couple of things happening here. What does this say? Um, doesn't seem to be giving me quite what I get on my browser. Okay. The UVA judge, let's go over here. This is showing me main menu, let's say main menu home. This is what I would like to think is the view page for the UVA judge. Okay? So this you can look at it. It's now got a address in Baylor University. Okay? They they actually run the world finals and there's uh, you know there's a connection to this to these guys. Okay? This shows that there's 2,000 problems available for people to work on, okay? All of the problems from our contest are, uh, our book are among those 2,000. Um, let's just see if we can figure out how do you, so one thing you've got to do is to get an account. See where it says register? So get an account on the UVA judge. That seems like a good thing to do. The other thing is there's a way to get the programming challenges problems directly from the UVA judge. Let's see if we can figure this thing out. What? Browse problems. Browse problems? Okay. Ah, look at this. So under browse problems, what we've got is, okay, I don't know about the Ukrainian. Okay, that I'm not so looking at. But okay, let's look at browse problems and programming challenges. Okay. Here there are the problems organized by um, which chapter? Okay. If you go over to here, you go to chapter one. Okay. Let's see what happens. Generally things happen. Things happened a little earlier today. Okay. 
Okay, here's chapter two. I don't know why chapter one isn't opening up. Chapter one, so these show the different problems. Um, it gives you some idea how many have been submitted and how people did, but that's not, that's not really so relevant. Um, let's look at one of these problems. Actually, I'd rather go to chapter one since that's what you actually have to do for this week. Let's go back and see if we can get chapter one. Bingo. Okay. So here now we have the problems for this week. Um, again, on the website, I make, a, make clear which web problems are available. And once you log into Programming Challenges, I've set up a course in Programming Challenges that says HKUST Spring 2009. When you sign on to the UVA, the Programming Challenges judge, you join my course and you will see what problems exactly are available. There's a nice menu and all that kind of stuff. Here are all the problems. There are eight problems in each chapter, four of which I have assigned. For the first week, I have assigned the 3n plus 1 problem. I have assigned um, Minesweeper. Mind Where's Minesweeper? Here. I have assigned uh, Interpreter, and I have assigned the trip. I would say this is, this is the easiest. I would probably say uh, Minesweeper is second easiest. Uh, the trip is third easiest, and interpreter is next easiest. Okay? Any questions about that? When you go to one of these problems, let's look at this problem. Over here, this gives you the problem. You can go sign on. There's the text of the problem and the description of it. Okay? If you want a printed version of it, Okay, ideally the best printed versions are available from the Programming Challenges Judge. Okay, they actually are PDF versions of it uh, and PS versions. If not, you've got the uh, text here. Oh, PDF, look at this. So here is a PDF file with the problem. So if you want to read it, this is a thing you can bring to class. On the other hand, each one of these problems on the Programming Challenge Judge, I edited the uh, text to make it clearer and more understandable. So I encourage you to get the descriptions from the book. The descriptions from the book should be available on the Programming Challenge's website, okay, once you get your account and fish around there. Okay, I think my versions of the problem are easier to read than these. On the other hand, the judges are the same. In principle, it's not like I changed the output to answer to any of them. Okay? So at the very least, come in with these descriptions. Okay? Any questions about it? So the goal for the next class, this is the important assignment for next class, is to go try to get an account on the UBA judge and the uh, other judge, the, the programming challenges judge. Any questions? Okay. So what are the problems for this week? The first problem is something called, the, related to something called the 3n plus 1 problem. How many people have ever heard of the 3n plus 1 problem? Few people. How many people never have heard of the 3n plus 1 problem? Okay, good. Very interesting problem. If you take the number, take a number, give me a, no, a small number. You, give me a small number. Three. Three is a good number. Okay? What happens if you take three, is three even or odd? It is odd, right? An odd number, you multiply it by 3 and add 1. That gives you 10, right? 10 is an even number, right? An even number, you can divide by 2 and you get 5, right? 5 is an odd number or an even number? Odd, we can multiply it by 3 and plus 1. And what do we get? 16. 16 is not only an even number, but it's a power of 2, isn't it? Right? So now we can go back and divide it. Ka-chunk, 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 1. Does everybody see that? Okay? So you start out with 3 with this process where if it's odd, you multiply it by 3 and add 1. If it's even, you divide by 2, you get down to 1. For every number, should it necessarily get, get into 1? You could imagine a world where there might be some number x that when you go and do this process, it hits x again. 
If so, what would happen? You've got an infinite loop, right? The amazing thing, and this is a truly amazing thing, is that there is no number x that people know that satisfies that property. Okay? That for every number, okay, from 1 till as far as people have tested, it will eventually get down to 1. Okay? And your job is going to be to think about this, okay? To write a program that basically goes through and does this algorithm, okay? And traces us down until we get, and tells me how long the trail is, okay? Any questions about that? That doesn't sound so hard, but you have to read the problem carefully. Let me just warn you about this. Any questions? That is the first problem that you're assigned for this week. Any questions? Let's look at some other problems. The second problem. I, still, I guess I've got till 1150. Is that right? What other problems do we have? Let's go back here. Looks like I'm jammed on the web. Uh, you can look them up. That's a 3n plus 1 problem. There is another problem on Minesweeper. How many people here have ever played Minesweeper? How many people have never played Minesweeper? One or two, okay. Minesweeper is a game, apparently, I have never played Minesweeper, okay? So that's not to make you feel bad. Minesweeper is, I gather, a game where you have an unknown, a grid that is dark, You have a grid that you're given, and you can probe at one point and say, is this a mine? I gather if it is a mine, what happens? You blow up or something like that? Okay, so that's not good. But if it's not a mine, or regardless, it will tell you something about how many mines there are in the eight cells around you. Okay? So perhaps if this is a mine, and this is a mine, this cell here has no, this cell here, this, uh, th when you probe with this cell, this cell has one neighbor that's a mine. This cell has two neighbors that's a mine. This cell has one neighbor, one neighbor, zero, 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 zero. Your job is to basically count, tell me how many mines are exposed to each cell. Okay, any questions? This is not meant to be that hard either. Okay, but to get us started. That's the kind of problem we're talking about. Any questions? Okay. The third problem is actually kind of algorithmically interesting a little bit, more so than it would look like. You have a bunch of people, okay, each of whom have spent a certain amount in expenses. Let's say that we've got uh, three people at a, in a club. This person spent 1101. This person spent $2.53. This person spent $17.23. They're all supposed to share expenses. That means that at the end, they should have to pay roughly, almost exactly equal to the sum of this thing divided by three, except that pennies can't be divided. Is that right? Penny is the lowest quanta of money. What's the lowest quanta of money in Hong Kong? What do you call it? Ten cents. Ten cents, okay? That's the equivalent of a, we'll call it a, a, the equivalent of a penny back home. It's the smallest indivisible quanta of money, okay? So what is the goal? You'd like to go and, what's the average of these three? Does anybody have a calculator? Okay? The average of these three is, I'm going to say, uh, 17, 19, it's about 10, right? At the end, let's say the average, 10, 93, 1093, 1092, let's say. I don't know what it is. There'll be some average. That makes like a 1094. Okay, there's an average, okay, amount. And the question is, how do you move money from these people to this configuration as efficiently as possible? So as small as amount of money as possible changes hands. Okay? Obviously, if this is what it amounts to, 
these people are going to have to give money to this guy, right? So the question of who should give them money, how much, okay? And the problem becomes a little bit challenging because the money doesn't divide equally. Any questions? And the final word problem has to do with an interpreter program. You're supposed to give you a description of a computer, a very simple kind of a computer. And you're supposed to implement how the machine language of that computer works. Okay? And simulate the execution of that machine language. Okay? Details of which are given in the problem. Okay? Any questions about that? Any questions about what the course is about or how we proceed? Okay? So for next class, I want to come back in here. I want to see two things when I come, well, maybe more than two things. What I want to see for next class, I want to see everybody come in, have at least tried to get accounts on the programming challenge and UVA judges. Is that clear? And ideally have tried to start on the first problem. Okay? So we know what kind of hurdles you have with the first problem, at least. Like, I wasn't able to submit. I couldn't figure out how to submit. The other thing I want for everybody is that they sit in a chair up front rather than one of the chairs in back. Okay? Just because I want to make sure we're close for discussion. Any questions? We may or may not have the TA there to scare you off next time. So I want to make sure everybody does that by themselves. Any other questions? Okay, thanks for your attention. I will see you guys on Wednesday. Okay? Take care.